The sun has been a significant area of strength for us, especially of late, and it will go through a basic, moreover fascinating change, the inversion of its beguiling field. This connection occurs generally at standard scopes, meaning the midpoint of the solar cycle. What's more, it has broad repercussions for us here on Earth. In all honesty, the fact that rapidly the sun could make it possible presents a serious risk that could cause complete disruption and catastrophe for everybody in the world. As you will find, the sun's engaging field is made by the development of electrically charged gases in its interior, a cycle known as the solar dynamo. Over the long haul, this engaging field turns out to be progressively grand and reshaped because of the sun's change and convective changes. Ultimately, this cycle leads to a complete inversion of the magnetic poles. The north magnetic pole changes into the south magnetic pole and vice versa. So, might we at some point dissect the entire cycle and investigate the sun? The sun is made essentially out of hydrogen and helium as plasma, a condition of matter where electrons are not bound to atoms resulting in a combination of free electrons and ions. The sun's interior is divided into several layers, with the core at the center encased by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The center is the sun's most critical region, where nuclear fusion happens, changing hydrogen into helium and releasing enormous amounts of energy. Over the core lies the radiative zone, where energy is moved outward through radiation. In this space, Energy moves slowly outward as photons are absorbed and re-emitted by the solar plasma. The outer layer of the sun's interior is the convective zone, where energy is transported by convection. Hot plasma rises toward the surface, cools, and sinks again, creating convective flows. The solar dynamo process works essentially in the convective zone and the tachycline, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The tachycline is crucial because it's where the sun's differential rotation and shear flows play a fundamental role in generating the magnetic field. Now, here's something interesting that you likely haven't heard. The sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. Rather, different parts of the sun rotate at different rates, with the equator rotating faster than the poles, a phenomenon known as differential rotation. This differential rotation stretches and twists the magnetic field lines, thereby elongating the magnetic field. The solar cycle is an approximately 11-year cycle during which the sun's magnetic field undergoes a series of changes, culminating in the inversion of its poles. This cycle is driven by the solar dynamo and includes several phases. At the start of the solar cycle, the sun is in a state known as solar minimum, characterized by a low number of sunspots and minimal solar activity. The magnetic field is generally simple and bipolar, with a clear north and south magnetic pole. As the cycle progresses, the number of sunspots increases. Sunspots are regions of intense magnetic activity and are associated with the rise of magnetic movement from the sun's interior. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarities and migrate toward the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a time of peak activity, with the greatest number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. CMEs. The magnetic field becomes extremely complex and tangled due to the continuous twisting and shearing by differential rotation and convection. As solar maximum fades, the magnetic field begins to reconfigure itself. The reshaped and tangled magnetic field lines reconnect, and the global magnetic field gradually flips its polarity. The north magnetic pole becomes the south magnetic pole and vice versa. This cycle is facilitated by the movement and restructuring of solar plasma movement regions. After the pole inversion, the sun enters a period of declining activity, returning to solar minimum. Eventually, the magnetic field reconfigures, and the cycle is ready to start anew. Currently, we're in the solar maximum phase, and the sun's magnetic field is about to flip. During this phase, we can expect to see some activity from the sun that could be as dangerous as it is fascinating. However, the sun's magnetic field inversion isn't a sudden flip, but rather a continuous cycle. As the solar cycle progresses, the sun's magnetic field goes through a series of changes. At a certain point, the magnetic field is in its most stretched and tangled state. It reaches a tipping point and begins to reorganize itself, resulting in a flip. So, how do we know when the sun's magnetic field will flip? Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity using various instruments and techniques. Observatories equipped with powerful telescopes, 
both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory measure the sun's magnetic field and its changes over time. One key indicator of an impending magnetic reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots appear more frequently and become more pronounced as they move toward the sun's equator, a sign that the magnetic field is becoming more unstable and is preparing to flip. While we're on the subject, let's delve a little deeper into sunspots. When the sun's magnetic field lines become twisted and tangled due to differential rotation, the sun's equator rotates faster than its poles, causing the magnetic lines to stretch and twist. When these lines loop over the sun's surface, they suppress the convective movement of hot plasma from the sun's interior, resulting in the cooler, darker patches we observe in sunspot images. Sunspots are not just fascinating solar features, but they can sometimes produce powerful solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. These phenomena release vast amounts of energy and charged particles into space. When directed toward Earth, they can disrupt satellite communications, affect power grids, and pose risks to astronauts in space. Moreover, increased solar activity can enhance auroras, but it can also raise radiation levels in Earth's upper atmosphere. Now, let's examine the difference between solar flares and coronal. Mass ejections, CMEs. While both are massive explosions of energy from the sun, they differ significantly. Solar flares are sudden, intense bursts of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. They release enormous amounts of energy and light, often as X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Think of them as explosions of bright light and heat on the sun's surface, like a giant explosion. In contrast, CMEs are enormous releases of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona. They can be considered giant bubbles of gas and magnetic fields being ejected into space. When a coronal mass ejection occurs, it sends billions of tons of solar particles into space at incredibly high rates. So while solar flares and CMEs are related, they are not the same. A solar flare can happen independently, but sometimes an extraordinarily powerful solar flare is accompanied by a CME. Although a solar flare doesn't necessarily cause a CME, they can be connected in terms of risk. Solar flares can disrupt radio communications, navigation signals, and pose a significant threat to astronauts in space due to the intense radiation. On the other hand, CMEs can have a broader impact. CMEs can cause geomagnetic storms that disrupt power grids, satellite operations, and navigation systems. They can also enhance auroras but present severe risks to Earth's technology and infrastructure. Another consideration is that during times of high solar activity, the amount of high radiation reaching Earth also increases. Satellites and other spacecraft are particularly vulnerable to elevated solar activity. The charged particles from the sun can damage electronic components, disrupt communication signals, and even alter satellite orbits. Although the sun's magnetic field inversion doesn't directly affect Earth's climate, the associated changes in solar activity can have an impact. Some studies suggest that variations in solar radiation can influence atmospheric conditions and weather patterns. For example, increased solar activity can lead to a slight warming of Earth's atmosphere, possibly exacerbating existing climate change. Could auroras be the only positive aspect we experience here on Earth? Perhaps one of the most striking effects of increased solar activity is the enhancement of these massive lights. These natural light displays known as the northern and southern lights, occur when charged particles from the sun interact with Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere. We often hear about the aurora borealis, but these lights can also be seen around the South Pole. During times of high solar activity, auroras become more frequent and can be seen at lower latitudes, offering dramatic nighttime shows. However, aside from the beautiful auroras, there are also other unsettling aspects of the sun's magnetic inversion that could occur if we are unprepared. One of the primary risks associated with a magnetic field inversion is the increased likelihood of geomagnetic storms. These storms occur when solar wind, overloaded with charged particles, interacts with Earth's magnetic field. In extreme cases, they can cause widespread power outages and damage to infrastructure. 
One such event happened on the morning of September 1, 1859. Astronomer Richard Carrington was observing the sun through his telescope, as he had done frequently before. However, what he saw on this particular day would go down in history as the first recorded solar storm. At 11.18 a.m., Carrington saw a brilliant flare of white light emanating from a group of sunspots. This event, now known as the Carrington Event, marked the start of the largest geomagnetic storm ever recorded. The white light Carrington saw was a massive solar flare, a severe explosion of radiation caused by the release of magnetic energy stored in the sun's atmosphere. This flare was so powerful that it triggered a huge coronal mass ejection, CME, directed toward Earth. The CME reached Earth in 17.6 hours, a remarkably short period, considering the Sun is 93 million miles away. When the CME hit Earth's magnetosphere, it triggered an exceptionally strong geomagnetic storm. The impact was swift and widespread, disturbing Earth's magnetic field and inducing currents in the ground. Moreover, telegraph lines, which were the backbone of global communication at the time, experienced severe disturbances. Sparks flew from telegraph machines, operators received electric shocks, and some message stations even caught fire. The induced currents were so strong that operators could send and receive messages even after disconnecting their batteries. One of the most striking and visible effects of the Carrington event was the brilliant display of auroras. The auroras were so bright and widespread that they were visible far beyond the usual polar regions. People as far south as the Caribbean, Mexico, and Hawaii reported seeing the sky lit up with vibrant colors. The auroras were so intense that they illuminated the night sky, allowing people in the northeastern U.S. to read newspapers by their light. In the Rocky Mountains, gold miners were reportedly awakened by the brightness, mistaking it for dawn and starting to prepare breakfast. People described the sky as glowing with red, green, and purple hues, shifting and glowing across the horizon. Now, imagine if a solar storm of the magnitude of the Carrington event were to hit Earth today. The consequences would be devastating. The sun is going through a massive change, the reversal of its magnetic field, a process that occurs roughly every 11 years as part of the solar cycle. This event, driven by the solar dynamo, could have far-reaching implications for Earth, potentially causing disruption and catastrophe. The sun's magnetic field is generated by the movement of electrically charged gases in its interior, creating a complex magnetic field that eventually switches its polarity. The sun is primarily made of hydrogen and helium plasma, with energy generated by nuclear fusion at its core. This energy is transported outward through the radiative zone and then by convection in the outer layers. The solar dynamo system, which operates in the convective zone and the tachycline, generates the sun's magnetic field. The differential rotation of the sun, where the equator rotates faster than the poles, stretches and amplifies the magnetic field lines, driving the solar cycle. At present, the sun is in the solar maximum phase, where sunspots and solar activity are at their peak, potentially causing risks like solar flares and CMEs that can disrupt satellite communications, power grids, and pose dangers to astronauts. Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity and sunspot behavior to predict when magnetic field inversions will occur. Sunspots, which result from tangled magnetic lines, can produce solar flares and CMEs, both massive releases of energy that affect Earth in various ways. While solar flares emit radiation, CMEs launch vast amounts of solar particles into space. These phenomena can enhance auroras but also present significant risks to Earth's technology and infrastructure. The sun's behavior is a fascinating interplay of physics and natural phenomena affecting not just our solar system but also life on Earth. Understanding the complexities of solar activity is vital, especially as we continue to rely on technology that can be impacted by solar events. The sun produces energy through nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. This energy travels through the sun's layers, eventually reaching the surface and radiating into space. Solar activity can manifest in many forms, including sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass ejections. Sunspots are cooler regions on the sun's surface caused by magnetic activity, appearing as dark spots. These changes in solar activity follow an approximately 11-year cycle known as the solar cycle, 
where periods of high activity, solar maximum, are followed by calmer periods, solar minimum. During solar maximum, the number of sunspots increases, leading to more frequent solar flares and CMEs. Solar flares are sudden eruptions of energy that release radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. These intense bursts can disrupt radio communications and pose risks to space travelers. CMEs, on the other hand, are large expulsions of solar wind and magnetic fields from the solar corona launched into space. These ejections can cause geomagnetic storms that disturb Earth's magnetic field, leading to beautiful auroras, but also potentially causing disruptions to technology. The impacts of solar activity extend beyond space. They affect Earth's atmosphere and surface, with studies suggesting that variations in solar radiation can influence weather patterns, potentially contributing to climate irregularities. Increased solar activity can also lead to atmospheric warming, which is a significant factor in climate change discussions. Furthermore, the potential for technological disruption due to solar storms cannot be underestimated. A severe geomagnetic storm could damage electrical grids, disrupt satellite operations, and affect navigation systems. Preparing for such events involves monitoring solar activity and developing strategies to mitigate their impact on infrastructure. Scientists continue to study the sun's magnetic field and its cycles to better predict when significant solar events might occur. This research includes both ground-based and space-based observatories that track sunspots, measure magnetic fields, and analyze solar wind. With advancing technology, our ability to predict solar activity improves, which is essential for protecting our technological infrastructure and ensuring the safety of space travelers as we explore space. As we study the sun, its impact on Earth becomes increasingly clear, from the stunning displays of auroras to the potential challenges posed by solar storms. The sun remains a powerful force in our local solar system, and understanding its cycles and behaviors not only advances our knowledge of space science but also enhances our preparedness for the effects of solar activity on modern life.